um, so I think I did like a chord change like this for that bridge. Everybody knows alternate picking, right? Cool. 
So you can do these three note per string things with economy picking. You get a really fluid, um, natural, awesome, like flurry, I call it flurry, but I hate explaining music to anybody. It just sucks. It's like, how do you understand what the fuck that means? But it just got a really fluid. Yeah, perfect word. Everybody knows that word. Sometimes you get a rub, you know. So I was, uh, case in point, I was playing this little, um, and I noticed that I kept scratching, I kept hearing something, and that's another thing to do too, is try and listen to what you're doing, so you can get rid of those bad habits, play slow. And I noticed that I couldn't slide down there, especially with distortion to get this, so I'm picking it, then coming over here, so I realized that I did and immediately do that again. So stay very keen and aware of, the, the wanted and unwanted nuances of your playing. So the way you do all that is you always slow everything down and analyze that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I should have said that before. That's one of the biggest things. Slow. That if you can't play it well slow, you'll never be able to play it well fast. You're just developing bad habits. 
Um, yep. What's your warm-up routine like? Um, I practice what I play. So, um, it's, uh, if I'm having trouble with an entire song, I play the entire song. When we do a record and I'm doing new songs from that record, um, I play the riff as simple as it might be. Um, I don't have drop deep. <laughs> song like this means war, a simple little riff, but I practice it until I can play it perfectly tight. And then, once you know, they become songs that's been a part of your repertoire for some time and you develop comfort level, a certain amount of comfort. Then you just, then for me, I practice just the solos. So I can run through every solo, sometimes twice if I have time. But I tend to procrastinate on the road. So, it happens. Before the show, you do the solos twice? Before yeah. Before you go out each night? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But I also always make sure. Because you, on stage when you're moving around and stuff, it's not so much at home, but I could imagine that it could be. You start playing things different. Things take uh, take on their own evolution, become different things, unintended things. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. That's why a live song, after three years of performing it, people will hear completely different things. The melody sometimes is almost completely abandoned, unless the band kind of corrects that. And same thing with solo, same thing with anything. Um, so it's good to kind of recalibrate your playing and go through everything and learn exactly um, what's going on with that. There's great programs for that. I use this program to relearn my old solos. Believe it or not, it's uh, one that I like. It's called Amazing Slow Downer. And it basically doesn't change the, the pitch unless you want it to. It just uh, takes it down, EPM wise. So you can, like a solo, you can play it literally this fast. No, I don't. I, 
I thought it'd be actually challenging to just do this whole thing in a clean tone example, so that's why I'm doing that. No, I'm just kidding. I just don't want to keep going over there and doing that. And it's sometimes I just don't know what's going to happen with the acoustics in here, um, which is completely um, hypocritical to what I just said. Over there. <laughs> but, you know, no, on stage, it, it doesn't fuck with me. Um, but yeah, clean it is for right now. I'll do some uh, some other distorted examples, but no, I don't always practice clean. Uh, definitely try and do that because, it, like I said, to practice what you play is very to me it's imperative um, because the muting, like I don't have to really do anything, but when you turn on this distortion, it's good to figure out where the noise is coming from. You know. Anybody else have a question? I have a question. When you when you talk oh, yeah. about oh, okay. yeah. What made you go to a sustain Um It was just fun at first. I had this guitar tech with me in the studio, Walter Rice, and he was just like a pedal junkie and like Gidget and Gasmo sort of thing. He built a lot of his own stuff. So back when a lot, a lot of people weren't using that kind of thing, he had this crazy one that he loved. And it was very similar to this setup. Um, but I just did a lot, a lot of different 